This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting from Park City TV in Utah, home of the Sundance Film Festival, the largest festival for independent cinema in the United States. This is our fifth year covering some of the films here and the people and topics they explore. Today, we spend the hour with the people involved in an incredible documentary that just had its world premiere here yesterday. It's called The Internet's Own Boy the story of Aaron Swartz. It comes as Aaron's loved ones and friends mark the first anniversary of his death. It was just over a year ago, on January 11, 2013, that the young Internet freedom activist took his own life. He was 26 years old. This is a clip of Aaron Swartz from the film. I mean, I, you know, feel very strongly that it's not enough to just live in the world as it is, to just kind of take what you're given and, you know, follow the things that adults told you to do and that, you know, your parents told you to do and that society tells you to do. I think you should always be questioning, you know, I take this very scientific attitude that everything you've learned is just provisional, that, you know, it's always open to recantation or refutation or questioning. And I think the same applies to society. Once I realized that there were real serious problems, fundamental problems that I could do something to address, I didn't see a way to to forget that. I didn't see a way not to. That was Aaron Swartz in his early 20s. By that time, Aaron was already an Internet legend. At the age of 14, Aaron helped develop RSS, really simple syndication, which changed how people get online content, allowing them to subscribe to different sources of information like blogs and podcasts. He also helped develop the Creative Commons alternative to copyright, which encourages authors and publishers to share content. He founded a company, Infogami, that merged with Reddit which allows users to collectively rank and promote contributed content, is now one of the most popular websites globally. In 2010, Aaron Swartz became a fellow at Harvard University's Edmund J. Safra Center for Ethics. It was around this time that he used the Internet at nearby MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, to download millions of digitized academic articles run by a nonprofit company called JSTOR. Aaron believed the article should be freely available online. Although Aaron did not give or sell the files to anyone, the federal government filed multiple felony charges against him. At the time he committed suicide, Aaron was facing 35 years in prison, a penalty supporters called excessively harsh. Now, despite promises of reform, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act used to charge Swartz remains unchanged. A bill proposed by Congressmember Zoe Lofgren called Aaron Aaron's law remains stalled in committee. It's meant to ensure victimless computer activities are not charged as felonies. On the Sunday after the first anniversary of Aaron's death, the hacker group Anonymous attacked a number of MIT's websites and posted messages criticizing Swartz's prosecution and calling for a reform of Internet regulation. The message said, quote, We call for this tragedy to be a basis for a renewed and unwavering commitment to a free and unfettered Internet spared from censorship with equality of access and franchise for all. The same weekend, a group of activists inspired by Aaron also launched what they called the New Hampshire Rebellion, a two-week walk across New Hampshire to protest government corruption. Campaign finance reform was another one of the many issues Aaron cared deeply about. In a minute, we'll be joined by Aaron's brother, Noah Swartz, his lawyer, Elliot Peters, and by Brian Knappenberger, the director of The Internet's Own Boy, the story of Aaron Swartz, as well as Aaron's father, Robert Swartz. But first, I want to play an extended clip from what, well, recalls a happier time in Aaron's life as an activist. It begins with Trevor Tim with the Electronic Frontier Foundation and then Senator Ron Wyden. We also hear from Aaron himself and then his girlfriend, Taryn. And Steinberg near Kaufman. SOPA was the bill that was intended to curtail online piracy of music and movies, but what it did was basically take a sledgehammer to a problem that needed a scalpel. There's collateral damage in the There were only a handful of us who said, look, we're not for piracy either, but it makes no sense to destroy a the architecture of the internet, the domain name system, and so much that makes it free and open in the name of fighting a piracy. And Aaron got that right away. The freedoms guaranteed in our Constitution, the freedoms our country had been built on, would be suddenly deleted. 
New technology, instead of bringing us greater freedom, would have snuffed out fundamental rights we'd always taken for granted. And I realized that day that I couldn't let that happen. I don't think anybody really thought that Sopa could be beaten. I remember him just turning to me and being like, I think we might win this. Aaron was one of the most prominent people in the community of people who helped lead organizing around social justice issues at the federal level in this country. It was like Aaron had been like striking a match it was being blown out, striking another one was being blown out. And finally, he like managed to catch enough kindling that the, the flame actually caught, and then they turned into this roaring blaze. Wikipedia went black, Reddit went black, Craigslist went black, the phone lines on Capitol Hill flat out melted. Members of Congress started rushing to issue statements, retracting their support for the bill that they were promoting just a couple days ago. And that was when, as hard as it was for me to believe, after all this, we had won. The thing that everyone said was impossible, that some of the biggest companies in the world had written off as kind of a pipe dream, had happened. We did it. We won. This is a historic week in internet politics, maybe American politics. The thing that we heard from people in Washington, D.C., from staffers on Capitol Hill was they received more emails and more phone calls on Super Blackout Day than they'd ever received about anything. I think that was an extremely exciting moment. This was the moment when the internet had grown up politically. It's easy sometimes to feel like you're powerless. Like when you come out in the streets and you march and you yell and nobody hears you. But I'm here to tell you today, you are powerful. That's a clip from the Internet's own boy, the story of Aaron Swartz, that recalls a happier time in Aaron's life as an activist. We also heard from Aaron's friend David Siegel, founder of uh, Demand Progress, and Ben Winkler, a friend of Aaron's. When we come back, we'll be joined by Aaron's brother Noah and his father Robert. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting from Park City, Utah, from the Sundance Film Festival, where a film on Aaron Swartz has just premiered. Stay with us.